Hi, in this video, we're going to go over the Greek alphabet, and um, we've got several sort of pages of letters we're going to go over. Um, we're going to go over pronunciation and a couple of things you, you'll need to know about each individual letter. Um, so, start off here, we've got Greek alphabet. I'm going to go ahead and uh, change my color over here in case I want to highlight anything. Um, so, we've got the first letter in the Greek alphabet is alpha. Generally, people know this. Um, we've heard the phrase alpha and omega. That helps. Um, <clears throat> alpha makes an aw ah sound, and it can be either short or long. Um, when it's short, it's sometimes denoted with this sign over it. When it's long, it might be denoted with a macron over it. Sometimes it's not denoted in the text whether the alpha is short or long. Um, and sometimes the text will only denote it uh, if the vowel is long. When it's long, it's pronounced ah, but twice as long as the short vowel. So ah versus ah. Um, <clears> that might be a slight exaggeration how long I, I did those vowels, but you get the idea. Um, so you'll see with a lot of these vowels that they're short and long variants, although some of the vowels can only be short and some can only be long. I, I should say, uh, some of the um, letters always denote a short vowel, whereas some always denote a long vowel. Um, beta, in uh, the period of Attic Greek, whose pronunciation we'll be going over in this video, um, beta is makes a B sound. <clears throat> now, later on in Greek, it came to be a V sound, uh, but in... in Fourth century Attic Greek, or fourth century BC Attic Greek, it would be a B sound, and that's what we'll be um, concentrating on here. Gamma, uh, this next one here, this is a G sound. Um, between consonants in later forms of Greek, it's more of a R sound. Um, we'll be concentrating on the pronunciation that gives it a G sound, just a hard G sound. Also, when there are two gammas in a row, so we have gamma gamma, it's more of an ng sound, like a ng, or if it's a gamma followed by another consonant um, that's articulated in the same place, like a kappa, which makes a k sound usually, it'll be an unk. <clears throat> other sounds articulated in the same uh, place are kappa and, c and xi, which makes a k sound, like an x sound. Um, this is delta, later on it would be more of a the sound. But in the Greek we're talking about, it will be a D sound, a D. Epsilon is always a short vowel. So it will make an E sound and it will always be short. Uh, zeta, sometimes, or some people consider it to have been a Z, D, is D sound. Some people consider it to have been a D, Z, Zeta. That's the pronunciation I'll be using. Um, there's also an idea that um, because later on it's later usage, it might have just been a Z sound. Um, I'll be using the DZ sound, so Z. Um, Ada, the next letter we'll be going over, um, may have made an A or an A sound. A lot of people will give it an A sound as in like a flambe or something like that. <clears throat> Um, sort of like a French acute accent. Um, I'll be giving it sort of a cross between this and an A sound, so A or A. <clears throat> and that's just my personal preference. However, an A sound will will be fine. And this will always be long. An Ada is always long. There's no short version of an Ada. Um, and so Adas and Epsilons will never be have their length marked because you should always know Epsilon will be short, Ada will be long. Uh, theta, later in Greek history, had a th sound, as the name theta now implies. Um, early on, it was almost certainly a t with an aspiration, so t sound. And we'll see in Latin texts, uh, interestingly enough, that the uh, that thetas will very often, they'll be written th when a word is brought from Greek into Latin. Um, but then also Romans will have commented on sort of the pronunciation. Uh, next is 
uh, Yoda here. Um, Yoda, let me get a pen color on this whiteboard. Um, Yoda here can be long or short. It makes an E sound. Sometimes it makes a consonantal sound, like a Y, like a, a Y sound. Um, but apart from that, just be aware, depending on the text and what is uh, what is marked and what isn't, it might be a Y sound, a Y sound, uh, like a Y or an E, either long or short. Uh, kappa will always make a K sound. Lambda will always make a L sound. Um, mu will always make a M sound. Nu will always make a N sound. Xi will always make a an X or KS sound in English, or kappa, it's almost as if you have a kappa sigma. We'll go over sigma in a second. Um, <clears throat> Omicron will make an O sound, a short O sound. This is always going to be short. And that's what Omicron actually means, it means short O. Um, in different dialects of ancient Greek, this might have been pronounced differently. Um, and over time, it almost certainly changed in its pronunciation. Some people pronounce it as an A, and they'll pronounce Omega as an O. Here, we're going to be pronouncing this as an O, and we'll be pronouncing Omega as an A, almost like a, <clears throat> uh, a Bronx or English English, or I guess I should say British English um, vowel. That will, we'll give that to Omega, and this will call an O. Uh, P will always, or pi, as it's I guess, more often called, will always have a P sound. Rho will have a R sound, like a tapped R sound. Um, Rho's interesting because we'll go over breathings in a different video, but <clears throat> um, there are things called breathing marks that normally go on vowels, but that can go on Rho, and it will be a voiceless sound. So if this mark is over a Rho, it'll be a T sound. And it's probably trilled uh, when it occurs at the beginning of a word. Um, sigma is an S sound. We have our capital sigma and our lowercase sigma here. This is capital, this is lowercase, but not at the end of the word. This is lowercase, but at the end of the word. And sometimes to avoid the confusion, um, at least I assume it was to avoid the confusion, uh, you'll have this, it's called the lunate sigma, which is just a different form of the letter with only one lowercase, and it looks like a C. Um, finally, we've got tau, makes a T sound, ta. Upsilon um, is often pronounced as, a, as if it were an I, or as if it were an, a U sound. Um, this is where you get Y in, um, in Latin-based uh, scripts, and it's often called uh, Y, or Greek I, or Y in different languages, like it, it means Greek I. Um, it probably had something akin, oh, sorry, oh, sorry, I'll, I will go ahead and redraw that on here. Um, so, Upsilon probably had something akin to uh, the sound of a U umlaut in German, to U. Um, the next one we want to go over. Uh, we'll go over phi or phi. Um, this is pretty simple. It's very similar to um, theta in that uh, later on it had a different pronunciation. Early this would have been a P, then aspirations so of P. Later on it became an F in modern Greek. Um, and then we have chi, which is a similar to phi in that it was early on a, an aspirated k, k, then it became <clears throat> uh, h in later forms of Greek. And then we have psi, as it's often called, it's lowercase, um, and this is p, a p s sound, so ps. Um, and then the last one I want to talk about is omega. So we'll come over here. So omega means big O. It has two very different forms for upper and lower case. 
Um, this one is always long. Omicron is always short. This one's always long. As it means long O, or big O, I guess I should say. Um, and we're going to give it the, if you know IPA, the value of this in the International Phonetic Alphabet, which is like an all. Um, <clears throat> so it's like a, an a uh sound, but you round your lips, so all. And that is probably its Attic pronunciation at a per certain period, although in different dialects, it, was, it probably had uh, different pronunciations at different periods of time. I believe in modern Greek, this is pronounced O, just like or a regular O. <clears throat> um, and so that's all we're going to go over for uh, the Greek alphabet video. In a later video, I'd like to go more over uh, breathing marks, diacritics, and things of that nature. But for now, uh, this is all we have.